How do you plan to pay and why car dealers ask car buyers this question? Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, a longtime car buyers advocate known as the homework guy. I'm joined by my co-host, the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Some people ask why I chose the name the homework guy to brand myself. It might interest you to know that I actually adopted it in the car business when I worked as a car salesman on a dealer's lot. You see, you can't be a car salesman and tell people you're an honest guy. Yeah. Well, at least not like the other guys that are out there. Yeah. That doesn't fly at all. So I needed to be able to disrupt people's thought patterns with something very different than they were used to hearing. The homework guy was a brand that spoke volumes about my customer service. It was easy for me to talk to customers I met for the first time because I didn't have to say any of the stupid things a car salesman usually says when meeting a prospect. I got to say, hello folks, are you just here to take a few test drives, do a little homework, and then go home to think about what you learned here today? If so, I'm your guy. I'm known as the homework guy. A very high percentage of those people came back because we all know what they ran into at other dealerships. I remember those days well. Because the people got genuine help and didn't experience any of the typical annoying pressure, you earned their business, Kevin, by providing something a guy like Andy Elliott could never do. You actually did give your customers world-class customer service. You know what's funny about that? It totally cracks me up when I hear Andy Elliott use the phrase world-class customer service because there's nothing world-class about Andy Elliott. No. So that's how the homework guy name came to be. It was born on a car lot and put into action from the first day I started working with car buyers. Doing what we do here full-time on YouTube was a very natural transition after my dealer owner fired me for being too honest. Today, I wear that as a badge of honor. Yeah. All right, enough on that. Let's talk about why dealers ask this question. How do you plan to pay? We've addressed this in previous shows, like this interview you did with me shortly after I came on camera here at THG. The show was Don't Say I'm Paying Cash at Car Dealers Dash Amazing Elizabeth. Friends, you absolutely have to go back and see that show if you missed it for a very good reason. It's near 1 million views. Dealers like to ask, how do you plan to pay? Because they want to start off the conversation talking about finances. It helps them steer the customer and be in control of you, and it takes the focus off the price of the car. If the salesperson can distract a car buyer and get them thinking about car payments, they've won a big part of the battle. When you discuss monthly payments, you can ignore what the bottom line price of the car is, and that's exactly where a dealer wants your focus to be. After publishing our first version of Don't Say I'm Paying Cash, a video that did near 4 million views, we had many people ask us, how do I deal with the question, how do you plan to pay? Liz, you gave some great suggestions for handling those questions in the interview video I did with you on paying cash. Since we did that interview, something actually has changed, and it's something big enough that it bears repeating. It has to do with the FTC. On June 9th, 2023, the FTC implemented what was called the FTC Safeguards Rule. That's right. Dealers and the NADA did their best to fight it, and that even got the FTC to delay implementation by six months. Yep. It was first planned to be implemented in December of 2022. June 9th came and went, and the FTC Safeguard Rules now implemented, requires non-banking financial institutions such as mortgage brokers, car dealerships, and payday lenders to develop, implement, and maintain a comprehensive security program to keep customers' information safe. Anyone standing in a dealer's showroom or out on a car lot and asking a question like, how do you plan to pay, isn't offering security of your personal <laughs> data at all, no. and is skirting the line of being in danger of violating the FTC's safeguards rule for keeping a customer's personal data safe. What's funny is we've shared that we both knew car salesmen who kept credit apps in their desk. Unbelievable. And we've known salesmen to even take them home. Shortly after we shared that, a viewer, Douglas Miller, who also happened to be a former car salesman, commented, Yes, it's true that we keep the credit apps in our desk drawers. I sold cars for years and we kept them to keep calling buyers to get them to come back in the store. Wow, interesting that he actually admits that. But I have a question for our viewers. Friends, how do you like your personal data? We're talking about the kind of information you'd put on a credit application. How do you like that kind of information to be floating around in some car salesman's desk or at their house? Yikes. Or maybe in their garage. <laughs> Certainly nobody should want that. So if you're asked this question, how do you plan to pay? You even have more ammo to answer it with. I used to always say, I don't disclose personal financial information out in the open. If pressed, I'd continue by asking the salesman, are you trying to violate my data privacy? Now, honestly, I'd recommend you simply add, are you attempting to violate the FTC safeguards rule by asking me financial questions out in the open? 
A short time ago, we added an important line to our email template we recommend car buyers use to send to dealers. It reads, I'll be interested in hearing what your finance office has to offer if I decide to purchase a vehicle from you. That's a great open-ended statement that you can make even if you plan to pay with cash. It's not a lie. It's simply a comment to the effect that you're open to hearing what finance has to offer. And the truth is that if the finance office was ready to offer you 0% financing, even if you had planned to pay cash, wouldn't you just want to hear about it? Of course. For those of you who don't have the guts to negotiate a cash deal in finance, go back and see our show titled, Cash Car Buyers Can Outsmart Dealers. I'd simply add that if you go that route and the suggestions with that video, focus on a 72-month loan because it's not legal to have a prepayment penalty on loans over 61 months. For those of you who do have the money and the guts to pay cash for your vehicle, this final stop in dealer finance is the perfect place to say you're going to pay cash, but only after you've gotten rid of all the unnecessary add-ons and extra fees. If you're not sure why you shouldn't discuss a cash payment before sitting in finance, go back and see our popular video titled, Don't Say I'm Paying Cash. There's a reason it nearly hit 4 million views. Now don't let it be you who is the only person who doesn't know why. As with anything in life, a little forethought and planning goes a long way. You got it, and that's our show for today. Also a brief update on our hassle-free car buying process. We've been actively identifying and recruiting good dealers to connect our viewers with, but we can say that finding good dealers can take time, so please be patient. Good dealers are indeed hard to find. Yes, they are. It's a sorting and vetting process. We'll have a lot more on that very soon. If you appreciated today's show and you're new here, don't forget to smack that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications of new shows. For those of you just entering the car market, you should be aware of all the free resources that we have for you available on our website, thehomeworkguy.com. There's a ton of stuff there for you guys. You'll find a free car buyer's guide and free email templates to use with car dealers. There's also a list of fake fees and even the FTC rules printout. We just recently added the spreadsheet we did about total car dealer fees by state in the U.S. And there's a download for combating forced add-ons and deceptive pricing. It's all there for you on thehomeworkguy.com, free for your download to use for car shopping. As Liz reminded you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. <laughs> Subscribing is free and painless to you, but it sure helps us a lot. And give this video a like if you appreciate what we did here for you today. Right here, courtesy of the Homework Guy team in our show, is where you'll always find the most dependable tips and helpful information to assist you with finding an enjoyable car buying experience in today's car market. If you've just recently joined our channel as a subscriber, we thank you, appreciate you, and welcome you aboard. Also, thanks again to our many faithful followers who just keep coming back. And to all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal, the Homework Guy team is serving truth and justice in the car business and always will. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.